blessing for us tonight. Amen. And we're going to move expeditiously and we're going to bring our teacher tonight. We want to just thank God for this uh, man of God, this elder. Amen. Uh, Brother Daquando, we saw him come into the church young. Amen. You can have a seat. Praise the Lord. Amen. Saw God fill him with the Holy Ghost. Some uh, had an opportunity to be a part of his wedding and saw his family come come uh, to pass, his kids, saw the corn blossom into a young man of God and God is using him, amen, a great witness, great testimony, not afraid to step out by faith, amen, not without a faith to believe God, amen, and so we want uh, Elder Daquan to come tonight. I really felt impressed on Sunday. I told the Lord, I see something. I told Elder Daquan some uh, time ago. I said, I see something in you. Uh, uh, praise God. And God is getting ready to bring it forth. And I felt led Sunday. I told my husband, I said, I feel led to allow Brother Daquan to begin to come and begin to teach. There's some things down inside of him. Amen. That God is going to release him. And, and when you take this step of faith, God is going to begin to do a great work in you. And so I text him and I said, Elder Dequan, I need you to teach on Wednesday night. Amen. And so uh, then I called him to the church, got the message. 
And then he called back, and so I said, praise God. Amen. I said, are you ready? Amen. But I know he's ready. Praise God. We thank God for Elder Daquan and for what God is doing in his life. And let's just put our hand to him and say, Lord, bless Elder Daquan to bring forth your word. Let us hear what you have to say, Father, according to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come and have your liberty. Amen. Father, thank you. Man, let's give God some praise. Come on, we're Man, let's give God some praise. Come on, we're talking about the King of Kings, the Great I Am. Let's give Him some praise. Come on, He deserves just a little bit of our time. He just wants just a little bit of praise. I won't be before you too long, but you know, first and foremost, I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I want to thank my beautiful wife for just my just for supporting me. Supporting me even through trials and tribulations, still there and supporting me. I want to thank our El I want to thank our apostles just for great leadership and just being obedient to God. And I just want to thank everybody else just for being in the house on today. I won't be before, like I said before, I won't be before you too long. But God does have a word. If you can stand with me, turn to your book, turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 18. Gonna read one through eight, and if we can read chapter one together, and I'll read the rest of it. And when everyone has it, they can stand by and signify and saying amen. All right, and the word it, it reads, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray, and not and not to faint, saying there is. There was, I'm sorry, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a window in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversity. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said with himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because the window Trouble me. I will avenge her, at least by her continuing coming, she worried me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? Lord God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you just touch me, Lord God. Lord God, I pray God that your words come out, Lord God. Lord God, you be the power of God. Let me be the clay, Lord. Lord God, use me as you see fit. God, I thank you and I honor you on today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I had to put a title on this message today. It will be called Push. Yeah, Let your neighbor and say push. push. Push is an acronym for praying until something happens. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Too many times as believers, we give up in the midst of a storm. In Luke chapter 18, verses 1, that's going to be our focus verse. In Luke chapter 18, 1, God is telling us to pray and not give up. A lot of times we're like the microwave generation. We want it quick and we want it now. Oh, yeah. Like a microwave, like a microwave meal. No preparation. Just pop it in the microwave, boom, and it's done. Oh, yeah. We cannot be like this in our prayer. Praying for something and then expecting it to be done. But I'm here to tell someone your food tastes so much better when you cook it. Oh, yeah. When you take your time, you prep it. We got a lot of cooks in here. We marinate it. It's the same with our prayer life. That's right. We got to take our time and wait on the Lord. Prayer is the same way. You take your time and you and you pray. Yeah. Don't rush. Meditate on God. And you wait until it's time for your blessing to come. Because when it does, it'll be worth it. God wants us to wait and be patient in our prayers. We also need to realize 
we all we all, we are all going to have problems on this earth. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. God hears our prayers and he listens. But God will not bless you because you pray once or twice. Only time will, I'm sorry. God will not bless you because you pray once or twice. And that's the only time that you have spending with God. The Bible says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. So in order to first put our prayer application, we must make sure we are righteous. We must, we need to ask ourselves, are we doing what we need to do to stay righteous? Or do we think we owe, that God owes us something and we just stay in sin? And do as we want and expect God's blessing anyway. Those who truly love God will push, pray until something happens according to God's word. Those who love God will keep his commandments. And those who aren't need to repent and get it right. Yes. Now let's look at a couple a couple people in, in the Bible who pushed through their storm. First person I want to look at is Job. Job went through a lot. Lost everything. In the corner while we would say Job had a right to complain. But in the spiritual realm, we would say he needs to push. Pray until something happens. And that's exactly what Job did. He didn't give up. Even when his wife told him, curse God and die, he pushed. God gave him double for his blessings, even in the midst of his trouble. Another example is Jacob. He literally wrestled for his blessing. Even though he got injured, he still didn't give up. When he was told to let go, he didn't until he was blessed. Just like Jacob, we have to hang on and let God know, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let go in the midst of my storm. I'm not going anywhere, God. God, in spite of my situation, God, God, I'm going to give you praise. God, in spite of my circumstances, God, I'm going to have to give you praise. Sometimes we're going to have to pray until something happens. Sometimes you're going to have to pray until the rim of heaven shakes. Sometimes you're going to have to pray until the devil hears your prayers, until the devil gets scared. Sometimes you're just going to have to seek his face. Sometimes you're just going to have to keep getting in his presence until God moves. See, sometimes a lot of us, we go through a lot of, we go through the same issue over and over and over. You ask yourself, God, why we can't get through this? Why we can't get through this, God? God is saying you can't get through it because you're not praying until something happens. See, God is saying we live in a generation right now that we can't just pray. God is saying praying is just not enough. Just praying is not enough. God is saying you're going to have to pray until something happens. God said your breakthrough is on the other side. But in order to get to the other side, you're going to have to pray until something happens. In the book of Job, I like this. I like this. We can read Job 1 verse 20. Job 1 verse 20. I like this. And it said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle. And shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. How many of you know sometimes praying until something happens just ain't enough? Sometimes you want to have to worship until something happens. Sometimes you want to have to get in his presence and you want to have to praise him until something happens. Sometimes you want to have to get in a place of travail until something happens. God is saying he is tired of the same old prayer. God is tired of the same old prayer. God is saying if you want more, you're going to have to stretch and you're going to have to get more. God is saying he ain't going to listen to your prayers no more. He's not listening to empty words anymore. God is wanting to see what you can do. God is wanting you to pray until something happens. Another powerful woman of God that I want to talk about was a woman with issue of blood. A woman with issue of blood she forced her way to touch the hem of his garment. She forced her way. She said, ain't nothing going to get in my way. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. I just got to reach and touch the hem of his garment. Sometimes we got to get in that place where we got to just move everything out of the way and just touch the hem of his garment. Sometimes we got to touch the hem of his garment even in our prayer life. Sometimes we got to praise until we can reach and touch his garment. Too many times we pray and we 
get up. We pray and we get up. We pray and we get up. God is saying he is tired of us praying and getting up. God said you're stealing your mess. God said you're still in sin. God said he can't bless you because you're in sin. God said how is he going to bless a mess? God said in order for you to get your blessing, you want to have to pray until something happens. God said he can't, he can't bless you if you are in sin. So one of the steps that we got to do, we're going to have to come to repentance. God said, ain't no way that you're going to be able to pray until anything happens, until you first repent. God said, you got to come to a place of repentance. God says he sees you. God says he sees your secret sin. God said that people may not see, but God said he can see it everywhere. God said he can see all over. God said if you want your blessing, you will have to pray until something happens. See, sometimes we're going to have to just move everything out of our way and just begin to pray until God hears our prayers. Sometimes the windows of heaven are going to have to shake before God hears our prayers. Too many times people are playing with God. God said he's tired of people playing, playing with him. God said if you love him, you're going to keep his word. You're going to keep his commandments. Too many times people are playing, playing with the Lord. The Lord said, get up and pray. Seek his face. God said pray until something happens. God said if you want your blessing, you're going to have to keep praying. You're going to have to praise your way out of your situation. God said you're going to have to praise your way out of your circumstances. Praise your way out of whatever you got going on. I look at Paul. Paul had a, a thorn in his side. But with that thorn in Paul's side, Paul didn't just sit around and complain. Paul didn't say Oh man, this thorn hurt. What Paul kept doing, Paul kept pushing. I can see Paul in there praying until something happened. God, I got the thorn in my side. But God, I know, God, something got to happen. God, I'm going to keep praying. God, I'm going to stay in your presence, oh God. God, even though you slay me, yet without trust your Lord. Lord God, even though the spirit's in my side, oh God. God, I'm going to keep praying until you remove it, Lord. Lord a lot of us just going to sit around and let it stay in us. A lot of us just going to sit around and let the thorn stay in us. God said if you want to remove, you're going to have to pray. God said you're going to have to pray, pray like never before. God said if you want it, you're going to have to prove it. God said we're living in a new time. God said we're living in a new time. God said your old prayers, it ain't working no more. God said he's sick of your old prayers. God said you're going to have to spend a little bit of time. God said you worship me just for a little while. God said you say thank you Jesus and then you're done. God said you're going to have to stay a little while. Sometimes you got to say God if you don't bless me today Lord. Lord God I'm going to come back tomorrow. God if you don't bless me tomorrow Lord. Lord God you're going to see me the next day. Lord God if you don't bless me the next day Lord. Lord God next week here I am Lord. Lord you got to keep pressing. You got to keep pressing until God say he's serious about business. He's serious about this. He really wants his blessing. He really wants to be delivered. A lot of us have been going through the same problems. We can't shake it. God said, try something new. God said to get in your closet. He said to begin to seek his face like never before. He said we live in a day and age where people don't want to pray. People don't know how to pray. God said you may be intervening for somebody that don't even know how to pray. God said if you want your family member saved, you're going to have to get in the presence of God. God said you're going to have to pray like never before. God said you're going to have to pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to pray until something happens. I got to pray until the walls fall down. I got to pray until God says time. Too many times we playing around with God. We play. We play at church. We play at church. Look at David. Look at, just look at David's life. David, he messed up. But you, if you read Psalms 51, that just tells you how much David... He was sincere. Yes. David prayed. Right. David got in the presence of God. David said, Lord, I don't I know I was wrong, but Lord, I need you to forgive me. Lord, I need you. He just kept pressing. God said, What's what's different from David and us? Nothing. 
nothing. Nothing is different from David and us. Job worshiping. We got to worship God. We got to worship God like never before. Because right now we are living in a day and age where people are praying against us. People are not trying to seek the face of God. Nobody wants to even have God on their mind. But we got to stay in a place where it's just us and God. God said, your blessing is right around the corner. I want you to say to yourself, my blessing is right around the corner. All I got to do is just pray until something happens. Say, God, I got to pray until something happens. God, I don't care about anybody else, but I got to stay in this place, God, until you make a way. God, you're going to have to make a way today. Sometimes we got to just tell God his word back to him. Say, God, you said that you're closer than the mention of your name. So, God, I'm going to call on you today, Lord. Lord, God, I can't pay the bills, Lord. Lord, God, I can't pay the bills, Lord. But I know a God that owns a cow on a thousand hills. I know a God that is able. I know a God that can bring me out of my circumstances. I know a God that has all things. We gotta believe. We gotta believe that. We gotta believe that. Sometimes, so many times, we don't believe it. We just say it, but we don't believe it. Sometimes you gotta tell yourself, "Look, self, you gonna believe it." So I command my soul to pray. I command my soul to get in His presence. God is saying He need more. He need more. He needs more. Come on and give God some praise in His place. Come on and give God some praise like never before. Come on and give Him praise like never before. We got to be like Jacob. Jacob wrestled. He wrestled. He wrestled for his blessing. How many of y'all wrestling for your blessing? How many of y'all wrestling for your blessing? I mean, it's a blessing right there, but you just got to wrestle for it. God is saying, where is your good fight? Where is your good fight? God said if you want it, you're going to have to wrestle for it. God said if you want it, you're going to have to wrestle for it. God said if you want the spirit of discernment, you're going to have to wrestle for it. God said if you want deliverance, you're going to have to wrestle for it. Too many times people just want it to come easy. People, too many times people just want the blessing to come easy. But how many of you know that you got to work for your blessing? Uh, hallelujah. So many times people just call themselves up here. Or I'm a preacher, or I'm an apostle, or I'm a deaconess, but they don't want to wrestle for it. So many times, God is saying, if you want to be a bishop, if you want to be an apostle, then you're going to have to wrestle for it. I know my our apostles didn't just have it easy, but they had to fight many fights. You're also going to have to fight many fights. You're going to have to pray until something happens. In the midst of the storm. You want to have to tell God, God, though you slay me, yet would I trust you. Yet would I trust you. Come on, too many times we ain't, we're not trusting the Lord. We're not trusting the Lord. Uh, we believe it. If we say we believe it, we got to act on it. God said, where's your faith? God said, you are a man of faith. You are a woman of faith. God said, where's your works? God said, he got to see the works. You gotta see your works. That is the Lord. Come on, you all gotta pray until something happens. God said, sometimes praying until something happens, it's just not enough. Even praying sometimes until something happens, sometimes it's just not gonna happen. You're just gonna have to go past prayer. You ask me, what's past prayer? As we just read in Job 1 and 20, Job worshiped until something happens. He worshiped until something happens. Sometimes God is saying, prayer is good, but I need more. I need more than just a communication. I need more than just you talking to me. I need to feel you. I need to feel you. Sometimes we just got to say, Lord, I'm going to praise you until something happens. God, I'm going to be in a place of travail until something happens. We can all stand. 
Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to conclude with this. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. The enemy knows that prayer is a strong weapon. The enemy, he fights you throughout your day because he knows that you're going to pray. The enemy don't want you to pray because the enemy, every time you pray, you're coming against every assignment that's coming from the enemy. Every time you pray, you're coming against every assignment that's coming against your life. Every assignment that's coming against your father's life. Every assignment that's coming against every family member that you have. Prayer is stopping it. We got to start using our weapon. We need to tell ourselves, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray until something happens. Lord, don't give me an ordinary prayer, Lord. Lord, but give me a prayer on my lips, Lord. Lord, until something happens, Lord. Lord God, I need a prayer, God, like never before, Lord. Lord God, we're living in a day and age, Lord. God, that you can come back at any time. God, if you come back now, Lord. Lord God, will my mother be saved? Lord God, will my father be saved? God, I gotta stay in your presence, oh God. God, I gotta stay in your presence, oh God. God, until something happens. God said it's gonna happen. But He said it's gonna take you. It's gonna take you with prayer. He said you're gonna have to get in a place, a place that you've never been in before. God said you're gonna have to seek His face like never before. God said you're gonna have to ask Him to order every step. We're gonna have to pray. Pray until something happens. Open up the altars today because I'm just trying to be obedient to God. I'm trying to be obedient to God. Be obedient to the Lord. God is saying somebody even in this place, somebody's been burnt. somebody been dealing with things in their health, somebody been going through sickness in the body, somebody been going through financial situations, Somebody been having problems on their job, and you've been you've been praying, but you ain't been praying until something happens. See, there's a difference between praying and praying until something happens. God said, if you want the windows of heaven to be pulled, poured out to you, you're gonna have to pray until something happens. God said He will open up every window of heaven if you just pray and begin to worship Him until something happens. God said, seek his face like never before. God said, if you want something, you're going to have to pray until something happens. I don't know who you are, but God said, somebody in this place has been dealing with something for too long. God said, try something different. God said, pray until something happens. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the word on tonight, Lord. God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. God said we can all just find a corner and just begin to pray. Just begin to seek his face. Just begin to ask God. God, make a way out of no way, Lord. Lord God, I want to pray. Teach me how to pray until something happens, Lord. Lord God, help me to stay in a place, oh God. God, a place, God, where it's just me and you, Lord. Lord God, I just want to pray until something happens, Lord. Lord God, I want to seek your face like never before, Lord. Lord God, it doesn't matter what's going on around me, Lord. Lord God, I'm going to pray, Lord. Lord God, I'm going to reach out and grab the hem of your garment, oh God. God, I'm going to grab it, oh God. Lord God, I don't care who around me, Lord. Lord God, I tried everything, Lord. But God, I haven't tried to pray until something happens. Teach me, God. God, teach your people to pray, God. God, until they come out of their storm, Lord. Some of us been going through the same storm since 2007, 2008. God said in order to get through it, you're going to have to do something new. You're going to have to pray until something happens. God, make something happen, Lord. Lord, God, bless your people in this place on today, Lord. Lord, God, I pray that God will be good, Lord. Lord, God, I sure in your presence, oh God. God, we thank you and we honor you, Lord. In your precious name we pray. In Jesus' name. Come on, let, let the church say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, my God, my God.
Amen. We got to pray until something happens in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. If you faint not. Too many people give it up in prayer. Amen. Too many people get weary in prayer. Amen. First and foremost is prayer. That's the biggest battle is prayer. Amen. That is the battle is prayer. Amen. If you got a prayer life, you already got the victory. Amen. But if you ain't got a prayer life or your prayer life is kind of weak, amen, you'll always struggle. You'll always struggle until you build up your prayer life. Amen. That's the focus is our prayer life. Amen. The communication line with God. Amen. The virtue flow. Amen. Because the woman pressed. Because the woman prayed. And she continued to pray. She continued, amen, to press her way until she got, amen, able to touch the hem of his garment. Amen. Come on. The outer court prayer is just not going to work. Amen. Standing out in the courtyard praying. It ain't going to work. Amen. We've got to get through the courtyard, through the outer court, through the inner court, through the holy place. We got to get to the holy of holies in our prayer. Amen. In our prayer. We've been asked yourself, when was the last time you spoke in tongues in prayer? Where the Holy Ghost took over. You began to intercede. Amen. Begin to pray for things, amen, that you didn't know what you was praying for. Come on. That's the that's the place God wants to meet us at. Amen. When we begin to just, amen, speak in tongues to the point where, amen, we forget about the time. We may be in there for three hours. Amen. Praying, interceding. Amen. Praying as the Holy Ghost sees fit to pray. Amen. Look, we reap what we sow. Amen. If we're not praying, guess what? We're going to stay in our situation. But if we're able to get amen and intercede and, and begin to plead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, guess what God's going to do? He's going to fix every one of your problems. That's what God's going to do because he's using you as a vessel. Amen. So we thank God for the word of God tonight, Elder Doyle. Amen. You said a lot of clarity tonight. Amen. Come on, a lot of things. Amen. Come on now. I don't know about you, but for first sermon, my God. Amen. That was a lot of clarity. Amen. You know, the biggest battle is our prayer life. Amen. Some of us heard it a whole lot of times before, but amen, we just goes in one ear and out the other. And we stay in the same situation. But the truth of the matter is we gotta pray. Until something happens. Not just say, well, I feel good because I prayed today. Uh-uh, ain't nothing happened.